Hey guys, it's Curtis. I'm back in the garage. We are reviewing the Kabuki Strength Cadillac Bar. Alright, like usual, to keep this review going nice and smoothly, I'm going to give you an overview of the bar itself. We're going to talk a lot about the construction of the bar, a lot of my notes from using this thing in training for the past few weeks, and I'm going to also bring up and give you guys some other options that are out there in the gym shopping universe. But before we get into all of that, I wanna go over the overview of the bar itself. What is the Kabuki Cadillac bar? This is a specialty bench press bar. Now, if you go to the website, it's actually marketed as a specialty bench bar. What makes it specialty for bench is this curved shape, as well as all these handles that are positioned at different angles throughout. Specifically, this barbell is an arched type Swiss or football bar. It has three sets of handles that are all one and one quarter inch thick. So you have the inside handles here that are 14 inches apart from center to center. Then you have these handles that are 21 inches apart, center to center. And finally, the last handles which are 29 inches apart, center to center. All of them are also set at a slightly different angle. The inside are set at 10 degrees, so that is a 10 degree offset. The second set of handles are at 12 and a half, and the third set are at 15. What this does is it enables joint stacking. According to the Kabuki website, that is the whole point of using this type of bar, which is why they wanted their bar to have those particular angles. Now, as for how you feel about joint stacking, I'm not gonna talk as to whether it is effective or ineffective because honestly, I'm not really educated in that way and I can't give you uh, like a for sure thing. However, there is a lot of science and a lot of research that went into the development of this bar and I will link the bar down below and if you watch, there's several videos in there, a couple with Kelly Sturrett and then of course some with the mad scientist Chris Duffin himself where he talks a little bit about how this was designed and talks about joint stacking specifically. Now getting straight into the construction itself, these handles are not a knurled handle, which honestly I'm not too concerned about because they do have a very nice gritty powder coat. It's the same powder coat from the handles all the way through the handle assembly. Now if you feel like knurling is something that's super important to you, which is fine because it says all comes down to personal preference anyways, then you can take a couple of different options. One, you can explore other options because this again is not knurled or you can do some things like some other people do on Instagram and I'll post a picture of Efren Lefts, I'm sorry, Efren Lifts uh, Cadillac bar that he customized here. So if you really want to take an expensive barbell and sink even more money into it, you can do that. The sleeve. What you get with the sleeve is a 16 and 3 quarter inch section of loadable sleeve. The entire sleeve assembly, which includes this cap, the sleeve, this welded stop, as well as the sleeve and then the connection point into the bar, as well as the connection point into the handle assembly, is all zinc coated. This is done to prevent any sort of oxidation that may occur, whether by use, abuse, or just oxidation in general. It does have that ribbed type of finish on the outside of it, so if that's something that you don't like, that might be a detractor for you. Personally, I kind of prefer, I like this noise. So for me, it's not a really big deal, but you do end up with 16 and 3 quarter inches of loadable sleeve length, which is tons and tons of sleeve length. And realistically, even if using bumpers, I really don't think that most people are gonna run into an issue where they're running out of sleeve to load plates on. As I mentioned before, you do have to attach the sleeves when they come in. If you haven't watched the assembly video that I made on this bar, you can click up here and it'll bring you straight to that video and you can watch it for yourself. I do have the new version of this where it is the shorter bolts it's four of them right here. The older version of this barbell had a bolt that went through both this flange as well as this flange here with a solid bolt that connected it. I don't know why they made this particular switch. Maybe they just didn't find that it added all that much stability to the bar. As the sleeve does come all the way through, 
and into and through this second flange right here. But this is the newer version. In my opinion, it looks a little bit cleaner and I'm a fan of it. There's really no problems with it. On a little note as well is I do have the blemish version of this barbell. I got it on sale. Big shout out to Matt Pendergraph for posting the sale when it came up. But I got this for free shipping, plus it was blemish. And the only blemishes are actually on the bottom of these sleeves. And the best part about those blemishes is that I've already worn the bar down so much that you don't even notice that there's a blemish anymore. Now the construction of the handle assembly, I don't know what to call it other than a handle assembly, uh, but basically when I say that, I'm talking about this frame going all the way around that contains these handles. I've, uh, these actually spec out to be seven inches wide, so that is from the top to the bottom is seven inches. This is actually a big benefit in my opinion because it's not too big that it gets in the way for certain movements. Just for size comparison's sake, this is the Rogue, which specs out to be 10 inches wide, and this is the Kabuki, which is seven. One of my biggest critiques of the Rogue bar is that because it's so wide, when you use it to do movements like the row, it tends to put the bar so close to you because it's three inches wider. That's an inch and a half closer to your body. So you end up with a position where the load is really over your midfoot. With this seven inch bar, doing bent over rows is a little bit simpler and a little bit better. That seven inches doesn't cause any other issues as well though, as far as having small or large hands. I have had some people over here and use this bar that have mammoth like lumberjack style hands and getting in and gripping this has not been an issue at all. I would say that the seven inch thickness is actually very appropriate for this type of barbell. The bar is also seven inches tall from the bottom. If you were to draw an invisible line going all the way across to the top. Now that doesn't mean that it's a seven inch rise for your handles. What that means is that there's a seven inch difference between here and the top of the bar. This really doesn't impact too much as far as movements are concerned or functionality, but one thing you may want to consider is that because it is such a difference, you may encounter some issues with storage. For me, I use wall storage and what I found is that basically this bar takes up two positions on what would probably be a normal gun rack. Of course, I'm using my French cleat system and I'm able to store it on another wall and storage space isn't really a problem for me right now but just something to keep in mind. What the seven inches does give you though is a three and a half inch difference from basically the bottom of the frame here to the bottom of the frame here. That is enough to increase your range of motion by about three and a half inches on all movements, which is a very good and distinct advantage that this barbell offers over any of its straight competitors. The bar is 87 inches wide just by itself, which is a little bit longer than your typical barbell, but that is a good thing because again, you get tons of loadable sleeve length, uh, plus you're getting this very wide range of racks that this thing can fit in. On the website, it claims that this thing can easily fit in the rack from anything from a 41 inch, sorry, 41 and a half inch to a 54 inch width. And again, that has everything to do with this amount of space you get to rack the bar. One other very nice thing is that be, this thing comes out to 20 kilograms total weight or about 45 pounds. So if you're used to normal bar math, this bar will not change your bar math. If you're anything like me, that's actually a huge plus because I often get very sick of having to remember which bar weighs how much. Additionally, the weight is indicated on the end cap, 20 kilograms with a nice squat face logo. So that's the overview of the bar. What I wanna talk about now is the actual physical construction of the bar. This is a Kabuki bar and Kabuki has a reputation for making some of the best equipment out there. This bar is no exception. All of the welds are very well done. The assembly itself, you can actually tell from the welding is a cut and then they actually cut notches for these flanges here. And then the notches go through and then they are welded on the outside. So as far as welds and construction are concerned, this thing is pretty much flawless. And I would like to say that it's flawless even though this is technically a blemish bar. Again, the blemish was in the zinc coating only. All of the handles are perfectly centered. And what I mean by that is basically from the bottom of this to the top of this, the handle is centered 
dead set right in the middle. Additionally, I did go through and I threw my protractor on all of these handles. All of them spec out to exactly the 10, 12, and 15 degree angle that they are claimed to be at. The actual powder coat finish is a very rough powder coat. It's a, and by rough, I mean it's gritty. It's actually very well done. It's just a gritty powder coat. It's the same between the handles and the frame, which I actually really like. I don't mind this powder coat at all. And inside of the handle assembly itself, we have this X. Now, one of the big differences, again, the big differences with this version being that these are short screws, not through bolts. The other difference is that this X portion in the middle is actually flush with the bottom of the bar. The older version of this bar actually had this somewhat up, about in the middle up, and I don't know why they changed it, but I would like to point out that the Kabuki cutout that's in the frame here, which is also very clean and very precise, uh, would have been impacted by this X had the X been halfway up. Additionally, the X no longer comes with the hole in the center. The reason for that is because Kabuki found that people were using this bar for things that it wasn't really designed to be used for and they were putting a lot of load on the center support piece. What people were doing is they were using an eye bolt or other, some sort of other connection piece and they were connecting this to like a cable machine to try to give yourself a multi-grip like lat pull down cable attachment. What Kabuki actually designed that hole to be used for was for doing the powder coat finish in a way to hang the bar during powder coat. They then developed a different way to actually finish the powder coat process that didn't involve the hole in the middle so that we couldn't misuse the bar. But I would again like to say that this powder coat finish is very nice, it is very grippy, and in my opinion negates the need for any knurling on the handles. I would actually tie this as far as like a grippy powder coat is concerned. This in my book ties exactly with the Mike Bartos Power Center grippy powder coat. Uh, and it's actually withstood the test of time and I cleaned the bar just for this review and it actually cleaned up really nicely. So no complaints on powder coat. One other small detail that I actually really enjoyed as well is that the end caps are not hollow end caps. And this is just one of those little things that really just kind of irks me from a fabrication and a finishing standpoint. What I like is how Kabuki did their squat face logo. It says Cadillac bar and then indicates the weight right there on the end of the sleeve. So now that we've talked about the construction of the bar, what I wanted to move on to was some of my training notes from using this bar. Right off the bat, we're gonna to touch on the design of the bar. Like I said earlier, please do go to the Kabuki website and watch the videos that Chris Duffin and Kelly Starrett have on this product. This bar does create a certain level of stability with the bench press movement specifically. The way that they're able to do this is because the center of the load comes through right here and all of the handles are actually higher than the load. What this does is allows the bar to actually sit for, like allows the weight to sit down below your hands. So if you do grab this bar just a little bit off center, which is highly improbable because it's really not that big compared to other cheaper versions of this bar that are flat, talking about you Rogue, now, one of the things that you'll have to get used to with the angled handles is remembering to put the bar in the rack in the correct direction. Generally speaking, this is going to be with the Kabuki laser cut branding facing out. Of course, that's where we all take our video, so that's where Kabuki puts their logo. But because it's only on one side of the frame, it actually makes it easier for you to set up the bar when you're doing movements. Another way that you can think about is that generally speaking, for overhead or bench press movements, you would want the Kabuki label facing where your feet would go. So for bench press, this would be set up correctly. For overhead press, because my feet are pointing this way, I want the logo out that way as well. And this is what drives my handles into the correct position for the overhead press. Now one area that it's difficult to get tied up in is thinking that this is only a bench press bar. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start with the bar up as high as I can in my yoke, and I'm gonna take you through some additional movements that you can do to include bench press. The first movement that we're gonna do is a pull up. What this is mimicking is having a bar, a pull-up bar specifically, mounted in your rack that has these neutral grips. 
Obviously these ones are slightly angled, but the first thing that you'll wanna do if you wanna do chin-ups is make sure that the handles are pointed down. You don't want the arch up, because if you have the arch up, you're basically doing the opposite, where you're putting the load above the pivot point, which is gonna cause some potential issues as you start to twist down. So rotate the bar so it's upside down. Again, the logo should be facing where your toes are pointing, generally speaking. So logo away. You can do a pull up. You can do them with all three grips. And it feels good. Uh, honestly, really big fan of using it for this, especially since right now, because I'm in between power racks, I don't actually have that pull up bar. The next movement that I want to demonstrate is going to be the inverted row. The same rules apply for as far as which way the laser cut logo should be pointed. And additionally, because you are the weight that's hanging on the bar, you'll want to make sure that it's flipped upside down. Again, pull it into the rack and using any of the three handles, it makes this movement fun, easy, and because of the angle, it actually feels really good. So this is actually a nice time to talk about one of the, it's not really an issue with the bar, it's just a training note that I have from the bar. Now I have this set up to demonstrate a bench press, and what I find is that sometimes the bar just doesn't want to stay in the setup position. So it's often, you know, flipping upside down. That's gonna be an issue that is with any of this style of barbell where it has that curve to it. Uh, but just sometimes it gets a little bit irritating. Really, it's not that big of a deal, but if you are like me and you like to get set up before you do a lift, this is something that may be a frustration from time to time. But with bench, it's nice, and I'll even grab it all the way back on these back handles just to show you how stable it actually is. Here it is in the center of the bar. And then of course all handles are located upwards of the load. So even if you grab these 29 inch apart ones all the way back at the bracket, it still won't tip on you. The bar is also very nice for overhead press. So I've turned it so that the branding is facing away from me where my toes are pointing. That 29 inch apart one is definitely, I probably should have warmed up. Now one of the things I forgot to mention earlier is this is a standard width sleeve. So it does take standard barbell spring clamps or collars. Now I'm about to do a barbell curl using this. I'm gonna be using the uh, inside two handles, the outside really uh, in my opinion, isn't that functional for this, but this still is the same way where basically the direction that my toes are pointing is the way that the Kabuki logo is faint facing. Additionally, when you start with a curl, you wanna start with the bar upside down. So with the curl, it's nice because you have those slightly angled handles. So it is like a hammer curl, but it still gives you some slight outward pronation. in case you have a preacher pad to get an even more isolated, either standing or kneeling bicep curl as well. Additionally, you can do tricep extensions. You can also use it for any sort of chest supported row, whether you're going this way even this way.
You can even use it to do a decreased range of motion bench, where normally you would get an increased range of motion. You can use this to mimic something like a board press simply by turning the bar around in the rack and upside down. You'll notice the Kabuki logo is still facing out. Now, it wouldn't be fair to talk about this bar if we didn't also talk about the price. Obviously, we looked at the overview, the construction of the bar, what makes it up, all of the research that went into the different handle angles. And again, go to the website and check it out. There's tons of science that's actually behind it. However, all of that comes at a premium price. Now this particular bar, the way that I purchased it, I got really lucky and again, a big thanks to fellow garage gym owners that gave a shout out and actually led me to getting this bar for the price I got it for. I ended up getting it for $450 shipped to me here in Ohio all the way from Portland. However, if you were to go buy one on the website today, full price, you're going to end up paying $499 plus a $75 shipping charge if you're shipping to Ohio. That makes this bar pretty much the most expensive bar of its type on the market. However, you are getting an absolutely excellent and well thought out barbell for that money. Now you can get it on blemish and blemish will usually cause it to ship faster because the barbell has already been made and the shipping rate is going to be the same. However, it is going to be slightly blemished. But again, mine was a blemish bar and I have absolutely zero complaints about the blemish that it came with. For that money, you are getting probably the best. I would say that it's arguably the best specialty bench football Swiss type barbell that's out on the market right now. You're getting an American made product and international orders are possible, but obviously that's going to come at a very increased shipping rate. Now on their shipping rates, I jumped on the website actually earlier today. Today is the 12th of October. And what I found was that Kabuki must have done something different with their shipping because a lot of their shipping prices for me here in Ohio have actually gone down pretty significantly. But $499 plus $75 shipping may be way outside of your budget. And so what I wanted to do was offer a couple other companies. And of course, the first one that we have to talk about is Titan Fitness. Titan Fitness offers a bar, it's right here. It looks very similar to the Elite FTS style of this barbell, but you're getting a non-American made $199 plus free shipping barbell. Now, I haven't had that particular Titan bar, but I have had other Titan multi-grip bars, and I can tell you that they're definitely not finished as nice but they are solid. Some other big differences is that the handles are actually only angled on the two middle handles and the other handles are actually just straight handles. Additionally, the powder coat is gonna be a little bit slicker. It's not gonna be as nice of a bar. You're gonna have spottier welds, typically speaking you're getting at a significantly better price. Another company I'd like to feature is Black Widow Training Gear. So Black Widow Training Gear is a small New York based company. They have their cambered Swiss bar. It's $300 plus $48 shipping to me from New York. And it is definitely an American made and like everything that Black Widow makes, it is very well made. One big difference is that all of the handles in that barbell are straight with an exception for the widest handles which have a 45 degree angle to them. Um, it does come with three sets of total handles and it has one handle that's in the middle. So I imagine that those of you that want to use it as a multi-grip lat pull-down bar could simply wrap a, like a 550 cord or somehow attach that to your cable machine and it would work just fine. The last company that I wanted to talk about is Elite FTS. They have the American Cambered Multi-Grip Bar. It is $315 plus for me, it's a $17 shipping charge. That's because I live probably an hour away from Elite FTS. You do get one extra set of handles because it has four sets of handles on it. It has a two inch camber. So where this has a three and a half inch camber, basically from this point here to this point here, uh, you're only getting a two and a half inch, I'm sorry, a two inch camber with the Elite FTS bar. However, it is American made and I have owned that barbell before. I can tell you that it does have a slightly slicker powder coat. And if you wanna know what I really think about it, you can watch the video right here. 
So after all that, let's get to the conclusion. So the Cadillac bar, it's a nice, big, beefy, amazing barbell. It's probably, very likely, the best cambered bench bar that's on the market today. The lack of knurl, from my experience, does not affect the grip overall. However, if you do like that knurl feel, this is something that you're probably not gonna like about the bar, but everything else with it lives up to the Kabuki name of being very well engineered, very well made, and of course, a satisfying purchase overall. Now, if the $500 plus price tag is not in your budget, which that's most people in a garage gym, it's kind of outside of our budget, uh, there are some other options, and again, we talked about the Elite FTS bar, the Titan Fitness bar, and the Black Widow Manufacturing. However, I have owned other variations of the bar, and realistically, I find it very difficult for anything else to touch what this barbell has to offer. It's definitely not a bar that you're going to buy as like your very first barbell, but as you collect in your garage gym journey and you continue to buy new pieces of equipment, a barbell like this may be something that very quickly becomes something that you desire to have. But that's been my review of the Kabuki Cadillac bar. Again, I think it's a wonderful bar. I think it's super well made but I do think that the price tag is what's going to make it a little bit not desirable for most garage gym owners. But tell me what you guys think below. I appreciate each and every single one of you guys that watch these videos and remember that when it comes to your garage gym equipment, you should always keep it better, awesome, and of course, badass. I'll see you next time.